Good morning, church. Welcome to another wonderful Sunday here. It's a beautiful day today. It's a lovely day. I hope you're uh, enjoying your weekend. I hope you're enjoying this Sabbath morning. Um, glad you could be with us to worship. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our announcements because we have quite a few. And then I'm going to say hey to everybody. So hang on with me just for a minute. Um, uh, first off, our, our every weekly announcements, we have uh, daily prayer. Um, this week, every day, every weekday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I would like to say an incredible, amazing, gigantic, huge thank you so much to Beth Julian, to Kayra Bryant, to Larry Bryant, to Adrian Walters, and to Charlie Trapp and Emily Trapp Young uh, for leading our daily prayer for us this week while I was on vacation. Thank you so much. Um, I was able to tune into most of them. They were just such a joy and a light to be a part of. Um, so I will be back at the helm starting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Please tune in with us. 
Um, we also have uh, our Bible study meets Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. Please um, reach out if you'd like to join us. We're studying Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans. It is so fascinating. It is awesome. So um, please reach out if you can, uh, or if you're interested, if you want to join us. We'd be more than happy to have you join us. Um, let's see. Okay, so yes, um, normally I would tell you that after worship, we are going to have Sunday school. That is not the case today because instead we are doing something different. Um, but I'm still going to need you to click a link after worship so you can participate with us. And that is we are having our congregational meeting to uh, uh, install, not yet, to elect, excuse me, um, to nominate and elect our new elders um, for uh, this year. Uh, the session has provided nominees. Um, they are Miss Kelly Shepherd, uh, Jeanette Colbreth, uh, Trish Irby, and um, can be made from the floor. So if you have anyone who you think uh, you would like to nominate, you can do that as well. And then we will vote together. Now, this is going to be super, super tricky because this is our first time ever trying uh, a congregational meeting virtually. But due to the circumstances of our world today, uh, our session decided that this was the safest thing for us. So, um, so uh, you should have received an email this weekend that has the link to the meeting. If you did not receive that email and you do not have the link, there are, there are other ways that you can get it, so don't you worry. Um, you can always, when in doubt, you can always, between now and the meeting, go to our website, www firstcpchurch.org, and right there at the top, it says Congregational Meeting Microsoft Teams. Click that link, and it'll take you right there. So when in doubt, you always just go to our website, and right at the very top, it says Congregational Meeting, um, and that, uh, of course, is at 1 o'clock today. Um, also, we will post um, at the end of worship uh, uh, the link to the meeting in the comments here on this video, so you can look there. Click that link, it'll take you right there. Um, it's going to be a minute because we're, the, the meeting is at 1 o'clock, so go have lunch, go eat, go do your thing, and then come back to us. But here's the thing, once you're, the meeting will, is, is as long as we want it to be. So as soon as this service is over, you can click on that link and jump into the meeting room and just wait and just let it be if you'd like. Um, and then you're already there. Uh, there, there, are other, there are plenty of, of ways that you can get in. If you have problems, call me, call Larry. We are here at the church. We are going to figure this out together. Um, so, and I would like to just say again, uh, this is a congregational meeting. So it is for our church members. All of you who have joined us uh, who are not church members, we are so thankful that you um, value us enough that you want to worship with us on Sunday mornings. Um, but this meeting is for the business of our church, for our members only. Perhaps having a little FOMO uh, will encourage you to perhaps consider membership yourselves here at First CP Church. Um, but if you are a member, please click on that link at any time between 12.30, 12.45, 1 o'clock. We're going to try and get started, but we will be flexible. We will work with everybody. Reach out to us if you have problems. We'll do our best to get you in. So that's what's going on today. Whew. Take a breath. The other thing that uh, I mentioned for the first time last week is we have some new groups that we're starting up here to help our church grow, to help our church move into the future of what God has called for us. First thing is a ministry team, and that is the personnel ministry team. Uh, and they will be in charge of overseeing and setting goals and uh, uh, performance evaluations for the staff of this church. That is just a normal healthy thing for churches to have. Um, and so uh, if you feel called to serve God in this way, especially if you have a background in um, human resources or um, some, some kind of performance evaluation like that, um, we would love to, for you to reach out. You can either reach out to me or you can reach out to Ramona Martin. She is the elder who will be serving on this ministry team. Um, but then we also have two very exciting new developments. These are task forces that the session is creating. These are just small groups that will sit and talk and wrestle and try and figure out a direction for our church and then bring ideas back to the session. The first one is a strategic planning uh, task force. It's called the 
Visioning and Discernment Task Force. We're going to spend time in prayer, asking God where our church needs to go. We're going to spend time visioning, dreaming, thinking about things that we would never be able to do. But we might with God, right? And so we're going to spend time living into what God is calling us to do. That's the Visioning and Discernment Task Force. And if you feel called to do that, if you enjoy that work, if you want to invest your time and your energy into this place to help us do that work, we need you. This will be, this is not a, uh, a task force made up of elders. No, this is a task force of the people and we need you. So if you feel called to, to step into this leadership role, we need people to be able to do that. So let me know, reach out to me, um, give me a call, give me a text, shoot me an email, and I will be uh, able to plug you into that once we get these task forces rolling. And then the next task force that is just as exciting is the Evangelism and Community Outreach Task Force. So this task force is going to focus on our community, our neighborhood, our family here in Olive Branch, um, how we can best reach out, what needs our community has that we can meet, what people are longing for that we can offer, how we can best spread the good news here in Olive Branch. So if that is your calling, if evangelism, if uh, uh, community service, if missions, um, if, if any of that is, is what you think God is asking you to do in this church and in this world, reach out to me about that task force. And I'll be more than happy to get you plugged in. Uh, we need you to step up is what, what this is about. Um, and this church will go as the members go. It will not go as I, the pastor, goes. It will not go as the session goes. It will go as we, as a family, all decide it will go. So that is what I'm so excited about. Uh, please reach out to me this week. We'll get you plugged in there. Um, I think I got everything else that I needed to say. Yes, most important thing, congregational meeting, 1 o'clock. Click that link. If you have trouble, call me. We will figure it out. Sound good? Everybody give me a thumbs up. Perfect. All right. Well, friends, I am so blessed and thankful to have our uh, just unmatched musicians here with us this morning, Miss Kelly Shepard, Miss Jeanette Colbreth. Um, they are going to lead us in a prelude. Uh, and as they do, I want you to take a moment, breathe, rest, remove the distractions from your mind. Allow the presence of God to fill the place where you are with your loved ones who you're worshiping with this morning. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. Let us prepare to worship God.
was so much that was, that was powerful. That was a good one. I like that one. We have so many people here that is so awesome and exciting. I'm going to start from the top. I'm going to do my best, but first, Miss Thelma, you had an excellent, excellent question. Um, can non-members come to the congregational meeting just to observe? Uh, you absolutely can, yes. If you're interested in seeing what a congregational meeting is like, it should not last very long at all. Um, of course, you're welcome to come and uh, hang out and watch and check everybody out, um, but then uh, just make sure that when it comes time to vote, you don't vote. But uh, yes, we would love to have you there, Miss Thelma, and anyone else who's interested. All right. <clears throat> oh, and Miss Marilyn, of course, had a great announcement as well. Where's that? Uh, last week I mentioned that small groups can now meet here in the church. Um, and uh, so that includes the Sunday school classes, Bible study, youth group, all that stuff. Uh, so Miss Marilyn is telling us that the Pathfinder Sunday school class will meet here at the church in the fellowship hall um, this Thursday at 1 o'clock. PM. Um, this Thursday at 1, uh, make sure uh, that you bring a mask. Make sure you wear a mask. We will have everything set up so that we can be socially distant. Um, but that is the Pathfinders class. I'm so excited for that. Um, and on that same note, tonight at 6 o'clock, the youth group will be meeting here. Um, so uh, anyone from 6th grade through 12th grade in high school, you are more than welcome to come. Um, please wear a mask. And uh, we will do our best to stay distant, stay apart, and we will, of course, be washing our hands a lot. So, um, if you're interested in, if a group of yours wants to meet here at the church, let me know. And we will set up a time for you to come here at the church. We're trying to make sure only one group's here at a time, but we can figure that out as we go. So, let's see. I see Cheryl Moody is here, and Cheryl brought a friend. She is watching with uh, Mr. Robert. It is so good to see you. Uh, glad you could be with us. Thank you, Cheryl, for bringing your dad with you. Um, hope you've had a wonderful day and week, and it's so good to see you here with us. Let's see, Betty Puckett is here. Barbara Weaver, good morning. Libby Porter. Adrian Walters is here. Pat Baker is here. Happy birthday. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, Evelyn Shackelford is here. Uh, Beth Trapp is here. Gimpaw's here. Uh, Art and Terry Matter are here. Good morning. Uh, Miss Joyce Shepherd is here. Good morning. Glenda Pearson is here. Good morning. Good morning to Miss Thelma, Miss Marilyn, uh, Tom and Beth Julian. Good morning. Carl Heinemann's here. Good morning. Hope you and Miss Gloria are doing well. Marilyn Kelly is here. Good morning. Let's see. Who else is here? Scott and Paige are here. Good morning. Amy Puttyfat is here. Hope you're doing well, Miss Amy. Um, let's see. Jane Vanderbilt is here. Good morning. Uh, Tommy Tilson is here. Good morning. So good to see you. Uh, Tammy Mahundro is here. Good morning. Sharon Marley is here. Good morning. Good to see you. Jim Smith is here. Reverend Jim and Miss Nancy. It's so good to see you. Hope y'all are doing so well. Let's see. Albert and Molly Hill are here. Good morning. Um, Linda Halford. Good morning to you and BJ. Mary Guest is here. Good morning. Dr. Clinton Buck is here. It's so good to see you. Good morning. Um, let's see. Pat Muncie is here. Good morning to you and PJ. Tomorrow, Gerald's is here. Hey, Gerald's girls. Um, let's see. Elizabeth Walters is here. Good morning. Um, let's see. Tanya Victor. Good morning. Good to see you. Is that everybody? Let's see. Connie Gilbert is here. Good morning. Uh, Trish Irby is here. Good morning. And Dale. Good to see both of you. Go go get uh go get uh Brandon up out of bed and make him come watch with you. Um, Megan's here. Good morning. So good to see you. Uh, Ramona Martin is here. Good morning. Uh, and I'm gonna go back now because we have several prayer requests who people have been putting in. If you have anything that you would like for us to pray for, um, please go ahead and put it in the comments at any time, and we'll do our best to see it and make sure and add you to our prayer list. Um, Let's see, so we'll start with uh, Tammy Mahundro. Um, Bailey, their daughter, had surgery yesterday, um, uh, an appendectomy, she is doing well. She's still in pain, but she's doing much better, so be praying for Bailey and uh, Ken and Tammy and the whole Mahundro clan. Let's see, Mary Guest um, has a, a prayer request for coworker Amber. 
um, in the hospital with blood clots in her lungs. My goodness, developed after a C-section and a lot of pain and missing her new baby boy. Um, prayers for a quick and speedy recovery. Prayers for God's hand all over that situation. Thank you for that, Mary. Um, Marilyn Lynch says uh, we need to pray for Doris Marr. She is scheduled to have a procedure next month. Absolutely, we will continue to lift up Miss Doris. Um, hope things go perfectly smoothly and wonderfully there. Let's see. Pat Muncie is asking for prayers for her son, Stephen, uh, who will have major surgery to repair and replace his esophagus tomorrow. My goodness. Uh, we will definitely be praying for you and for Stephen in the hospital for a week. So we will be praying for all of that. Let's see. Thank you for all of that. Kim Burkhardt is here. Good morning. It's so good to see you. Glad you're here with us. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Sunny Green is here. Hey, Sunny May. Hope you're doing well hanging in there. New college student, you moved in. Um, Libby Porter. Oh, thank you. We should absolutely be praying for all of our uh, teachers and students and administrators and staff, people who are um, coming back to school. I think DeSoto County started this past week. Um, Shelby County starts tomorrow. As Libby says, that is the end of their spring break, finally. They went to spring break and never came back. So the uh, longest spring break ever. Everybody is virtual. Students will come the 31st, so we'll be praying for all the teachers, all the staff people, everybody involved with that. And in DeSoto County, who have already started up and all over, um, who are struggling to figure out just the right balance of how to do this thing. Um, so it is so good to see all of you. Um, keep the prayer requests coming. Keep the... Uh, um, you know, the involvement, the engagement coming. Um, uh, Mama Jan has a prayer request as well. Um, thank you for putting it in the chat to remind me. Because uh, she wrote it down and gave it to me. I've got it here. Um, uh, she is having surgery on Wednesday on her eye. So be praying for Mama Jan um, so she can heal and be better and be back to the one that we love and hold dear. So keep Mama Jan in your prayers. Um, and Adrian's got a prayer request. She says, please keep the family of Art Seeger in your prayers. It was Harold's uncle. We will be praying for the Seeger family and Harold and, and everyone involved there. Thank you for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, just keep, keep the prayer requests coming. Um, and we'll do our best to, to take some time to get there. Um, but now as we press on and journey into our worship service, um, we're going to open with prayer, but first with a little scripture. Uh, I'm going to be reading Psalm 138 uh, to prepare us, to calm us, to start us this morning, and then we'll begin our time together. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness for you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. But the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Friends, let's pray. Your steadfast love endures forever, O Lord. And we are so thankful that when we feel far away from you, you and your mightiness come near to us. You draw near to us who are lowly so that we can feel your presence and dwell with you in your glory. God, we pray as we begin this time of fellowship, of song, of prayer, of praise, of listening, that you would be with us. Send your Holy Spirit here in this place and in all of the places where we come from so that we can learn and grow and be transformed. 
by the power of your Holy Spirit into the church you have called us to be. Oh God, we are so thankful for your presence with us. Bless us during this time. We love you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. I want to invite you to stand up in body or in spirit as you are able. We will sing our first song together. Uh, Great is thy faithfulness. The words will be on your screen. This is one of my absolute favorite hymns. If you're ever in Pastor Paul trivia and you're asked the question, what is Pastor Paul's favorite hymn? This is one of several that would be the right answer. So let's stand together and let's sing. so much. You may be seated. When we come together, God calls us to recognize our sinfulness, our brokenness, to confess it and to repent of it. So friends, in this time, let us pray our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, you call us to proclaim the gospel, but we remain silent in the presence of evil. You call us to be reconciled to you and to one another, but we are content to live in separation. You call us to seek the good of all, but we fail to resist the powers of oppression. 
You call us to fight pretensions and injustice, but we sit idly by, endangering the lives of people far and near. Hear us, O God, as we confess our sins privately. Forgive us, O Lord. Reconcile us to you by the power of your Spirit and give us the courage and strength to be reconciled to one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Friends, our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. So, friends, beloved people of God, Believe the good news. Through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Be with you. All right, friends. Let's see, Miss Lubain is here. Good morning. It's so good to see you. As is Miss Judy Blanner. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Um, all right, so uh, now at this time, Uh, We will unite ourselves together in our common faith in Jesus Christ. We will say our affirmation of faith together. Um, The words will be printed on your screen. Please recite with me as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we have confessed and been forgiven. We have received God's forgiveness. We have received God's unity through the Holy Spirit that unites us. And now we receive the peace of Jesus Christ that flows through all of us into one another. So now wish those around you of Jesus through signs of peace and reconciliation and love. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Awesome. All right. Um, You know what time it is. Get your fingers ready. Get your thumbs ready to type and let me know what exciting things you are rejoicing and celebrating so that I can walk over there and ring that bell nice and loud so we can all celebrate together. Uh, I got a couple that I can start with while you're going ahead and getting ready to type. It'll take a minute for it to get from me to you and then for you to type it and get all the way back from you to me. Mama Jan has a prayer request. Her grandson Taylor has a uh, drive-by white coat ceremony. Of course, this whole world is so weird, you can't have normal celebrations and ceremonies. But he is receiving his white coat from pharmacist school through a ceremony tomorrow Um, beginning his new career. That is so exciting, and we shall ring the bell for that. Let's see. We also have plenty of birthdays today that are coming up this week. Uh, Caden Tabor uh, celebrated her birthday yesterday, and we have two birthdays today. Pat Baker and Barbara Gossett, happy, happy birthday. You get your own ring of the bell. Uh, Let's see, Ken Jones and Allie Trompower, Ansley and Brinkley Hoke, Melissa Johnson all also celebrate birthdays this week, so happy birthday to all of you. 
We also have uh, Chip and Judy Harden have their anniversary this week. Happy anniversary, as do Dale and Trish Irby. Happy anniversary to all of you. All right, let's see what things we should be rejoicing. What else? Ah, of course. Let me see. It's got to be in there. I want them to say it. You going you going you going to put there in the chat, Trish? Oh, there's Dale texted me. Okay. Uh well, uh here here is the wonderful Josiah Box news. Um on August the 3rd, Megan Irby um, became Megan George. Um, she married Stephen, her fiance. Um, and so they, are, they have decided to go ahead and get married, which I think is absolutely a wonderful decision in the middle of all this craziness. So Megan and Stephen, uh, we send so much love and prayers for you. We're so excited and happy for you. Um, so there is no better reason to ring the bell than for new life that has come together. So congratulations. That is so wonderful. Um, let's see. What else? Libby Porter has one. Uh, she says, if all goes the way she's planning tomorrow, be careful starting sentences with that, but okay. Uh, tomorrow will be her last first day of school. Let the retirement countdown begin. Tick tock, congratulations. Get all the way there. I know you can do it. Go out of, go out of your way to, to give my roommates some trouble this year, why don't you? Um, let's see... Tanya Victor says, Grace had a great first week of school. That is such wonderful news. That's exciting. Keep praying for all of those attending school and working at the school to keep everybody safe, happy, and healthy. Absolutely. Congratulations, Grace. It's so good to see you. Let's see. Yeah, if you got anything else, please let me know. Put it in the chat below. We got happy anniversaries all over the place, happy birthdays. Um, Noah Quinton's here. Hey, Noah. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you, man. Welcome. Um, anything that you would like to rejoice or celebrate, put it in the chat so that we can celebrate with you. Um, I'm going to press on now into our um, time of offering, but if you have another Josiah box that comes up that you just remembered all of a sudden, you need to put it in later. If your fingers weren't quick enough, that's totally fine. Put it in the chat whenever you are able, and we will come back to it and rejoice. There's always a good reason to come back and rejoice. Um, so yeah, we're going to press on. Um, uh, when we come together and worship, God asks us to offer of ourselves. And so we have a time of offering where we put money in the plate, we um, pray about what God has done in our lives and how we can respond to that in, in gratitude. Um, and so we try to set aside time to do that in this time, even when we are separated um, because of COVID. Um, so in this time, we're going to hear a beautiful offertory piece um, from Miss Kelly and Mama Jan. And I want you to go grab an envelope, go grab your gift for this week, um, uh, address it, do everything that you need to do so you can put it in the mail first thing tomorrow morning. We are accepting offerings through the mail we are making sure someone is here every day of the week to check the mail so that we know we're getting everything covered. Um, uh, so get your stuff ready to send. Sit and reflect on the goodness of God, the gifts that God has given all of us, um, how thankful we are for what God has done and how we can respond to that through gifts, through our service, through our time, through our energy. Um, so in this time, get your stuff ready to go. Uh, and let us prepare our offerings for God.
Friends, let's pray. Almighty God, morning by morning, new mercies we see of you. Bless us in ways we could never understand or comprehend. God, we are so thankful that you continue to show us your grace and your love, even in times of distress and trouble and confusion and doubt and uncertainty. God, we pray that you would give us the strength and the courage to respond to these gifts that you give us with gifts of our own, giving of ourselves just as you gave of yourself so that we can be the light and the darkness, so that we can be your hands and feet here on earth like you call us to do. God, we pray that you bless all of these gifts that we prepare to give today. Bless them and multiply them for the glory of your kingdom, God. Bless all those who give, that they may be your hands and feet here in the world. God, we love you so much. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. If you have your Bible, if you don't have your Bible, go get your Bible. If you do have your Bible, turn with me to the prophet Isaiah. It will be in Isaiah chapter 51, the first six verses, one through six. Isaiah 51, verses one through six. Let us listen now for the word of God. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me that my justice and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. Those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever. My deliverance will never be ended. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, for the gift of your holy scriptures, we give you thanks. We pray in this time that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us and to guide us as we wrestle with this text to better understand what it is you are trying to show us. Help us, O God, to listen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You, right there? Hi. Yeah, you. You out there that can hear me, you out there watching me on some screen of yours, you who chose to roll over this morning and be conscious enough to click all the right buttons to be here for this moment, you listen to me. I have something to say, but by the grace of God, it won't be me who says it, but God. But I will say listening is a whole lot easier said than done, isn't it? We human beings have a much harder time listening than we'd like to admit. God knows this, and that's why God begins the the 51st chapter of Isaiah with the very words, listen to me. As a parent tells a child, we tell children that all the time, don't we? Hey, hey, stop, you, hey, no, 
listen to me. Listen to me. And children, we have to tell our parents all the time to listen, don't we? They never listen to you. They're always doing grown-up things and uh, just ignoring you. We have to say it all the time. We have to remind them, hey, I'm trying to tell you something. Listen to me. But those three words, our journey this morning begins. But God does not stop there. Like all good letters, God addresses this one so we know who God is speaking to, who God is asking to listen. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. You too? I, I think that's me. I mean, I, I hope that that's me. Maybe I could include myself in such a group. I mean, I, I try to seek the Lord. At least I think I pursue righteousness. Y'all, this live stream right now is full of people who are pursuing righteousness and seeking the Lord. So I imagine that these words this morning are for us. But those aren't the only people here today. We are also full of people who, for one reason or another, have given up seeking, who can no longer endure the pursuit, maybe who have grown content with the God we know and would rather not chase the one that keeps on moving. Those of us who have spent our lives chasing the Spirit and have simply grown too exhausted to press on, so we lie down and we rest, and yet these words are for us as well. So friends, put on your listening ears with me. Because if we hope to find the truth in this text, we'll need to stop our talking and finally start to listen. Good. All right. So let's dive on in. The first thing we hear when we start to listen to God's imperative is God saying, look, listen, look. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and Sarah, who bore you. First, we must look. We must look to where we came from. Look to the past. Look to our deep roots that have fed and nurtured us to be who we are today. Where did you come from? I came from Jay and Mary from Bill and Christine, from LaRoyce and Peggy. And they came from your hearts and Browns and uh, so many others who I don't know. And yet I know at least something about them. All those whom I came from, the rock from whom I was hewn, the quarry from whom I was dug, the many ways, the, the many names that I carry on with me, they are not one, they are many. I don't know who you came from. I don't know what rock you were cleft from. I do know one thing, and that is, believe it or not, we share a rock. We share a quarry. I don't know all of your story, but I do know part of your story. Uh, let me see. I know that, that your story includes a guy named uh, Peter, maybe a guy named James and John and maybe Mary and Mary and uh, Mary, and Joseph and Ezra and Nehemiah and Isaiah and Jeremiah, and uh, a part of your rock is named David, I know, and a part of it, Samuel and Joshua and Moses and Joseph and Jacob and Isaac and Abraham and Sarah. So when we remember our past and those who have gone before us, our ancestors in the faith, who paved the way for us, who led us and guide us and brought us here to this place, we remember some different people and some of the same people. God asks us to remember those that went before us. So if you choose to forget the past that brought you here to where you are today, you're not listening. People like Abraham and Sarah, the mother and father of a nation, the one who became many, you know, this right here is the only place in the Hebrew Bible that asks us to remember 
Sarah in addition to Abraham. Lots of places invoke Abraham, but this one remembers Sarah as well. You know what that means, right? Don't forget your mama. But why, Lord? Why must we remember uh, Abraham and Sarah right now? What insight can looking into our past give us for moving forward? Rest assured, the God who answers cries answers our cry. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. What does that mean? He was one, but I made him many. What on earth could that mean? Abraham was called to be the father of many nations. As God promised him, his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the shore. God turned Abraham from one man into a great family that spent generations and centuries and continues to this moment where you're sitting, listening to me in your pajamas right now. Or at least, I hope you're listening. God turned Abraham from an individual into a living, breathing community, a gathering of souls intertwined in memory and in purpose, creating not just one thing, but one thing that is many things. Which means if we're listening, and we are listening, right? When we look to our past, our ancestors who gave us life, we learn something about the world, about ourselves. We learn that like Abraham, we are not one. We are many. We do not exist as solitary monads. We do not exist as individuals. We exist as parts of a greater whole our world tells us that I am who I am. Nobody can change me but me. I am self-contained, singular. I am my own identity that needs no relation to anybody else to know myself. And yet the Bible tells us we are parts of the body of Christ and that no part is more important than the other and that all parts are necessary. When we look to our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, we learn something that our world and our society have completely forgotten. And that is that we as human beings are hopelessly interconnected to every other living, breathing thing in God's creation. We are not one. We are many. What happens to Muslims in China, what happens to Buddhists in India, deeply breaks our spirit as American Christians. The only question is, Will we open our eyes to see it? You are not an individual. You are a part of a greater whole, an organic, living, breathing body. And if you think otherwise, you're not listening. But alas, we must remember the reason these words were written at all. We have to remember the context of the texts that we read in the Bible. The prophet Isaiah prophesied before and during the Babylonian exile of the Israelites. This section, chapter 51, is found in what scholars call Second Isaiah. It was written from Babylon, from the exile, not in Israel, in Babylon. An exiled people in the middle of their persecution. So Isaiah gives his fellow Israelites comfort and encouragement by telling them to remember where they came from. Remember Abraham and Sarah and their faith that God would bring life where there was only death. And from that faith and that grace, we were born into this creation. We today are not reading these words from exile in Babylon. No, but we are reading from an exile of our own. We read these words from the exile imposed on us by our broken creation by a sickness that follows as unseen, unheard until it's too late. We feel separated from one another, much like Israel, so we too need comfort, encouragement, and hope. So what do we do? We remember Abraham and Sarah. We remember that just as they were one but became many, so too are we now more than just one. 
If anything would ever be able to teach us how interconnected our lives are, a silent virus that has already killed over 170,000 of our moms, our dads, sisters, brothers, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, neighbors, mailmen, hairdressers, and children should be that thing. And this time of six feet away and face masks and social distancing and drive through testing, we need to be reassured that we are interconnected with one another, more reasons than one. The truth is, friends, what we do does not just affect ourselves. What we do affects others around us. Your choices are not just your own. Your choices affect me. My choices affect you. The idea that you or me or any of us can make decisions that just affect ourselves is a myth. It's a lie, and if you still believe it, you aren't listening. No, we are not individuals. We are instruments. Some of us are trumpets. Some of us are violins. Some of us are cellos. Some of us are clarinets or timpanies or bassoons. Some of us are marimbas. Some of us are oboes. Some of us are beautiful singing voices. Some of us are pianos. And all of us can make whatever sound we want. But if we don't listen to the orchestra and look to the director's baton, we will not make music but noise. So let us remember that we are not a solo act, but one note within a sprawling, harmonious movement that cannot be completed without all of us. And so we remember. We remember Abraham and Sarah. We remember Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. We remember David and Bathsheba and Solomon. We remember Mary and Peter and Joseph and Mary and James and John and Mary. We remember Martin Luther and John Calvin and Martin Luther King and John Lewis. We remember Finus and Samuel and Ephraim. Ephraim. We remember LaRoyce and Peggy and Bill and Christine and Jay and Mary. Now look from the rock to the heavens. They shall be no more. If you think the point of this life is to disappear up into the clouds to be with God in heaven, then you aren't listening. I look to the earth, it will wear out like a cheap jacket. But the salvation of the Lord will be forever. The deliverance of our God will never end. So friends, let us remember what has come before. If you don't, you're not listening. And then make sure you shh. Listen. The symphony is about to begin. Friends, our final song this morning is called Your Grace is Enough. I want to invite you to stand in body or in spirit as you are able to sing with us. As we sing, your grace is enough. by still waters and to mercy and nothing can keep us apart so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh God your grace is
the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough. Amen, friends. It is so wonderful to see all of you. Kier Hull is here. Good morning. Sharon Johnson is here. Good morning. Joe Tripp is here. Shouts out to East Tennessee. Miss you guys. It's so good to see you, Joe. Um, I hope you had a wonderful, meaningful encounter with Jesus this morning. Don't let this moment end when you log off, though. Worship is supposed to be something that lingers with us. Let it sit. Go read that scripture over and over again. Let it dwell with you so that you can dwell in God's presence even after this moment is over. I love you all so, so much, so very much. I miss you like crazy. I can't wait to see you again. Um, but in the meantime, do not forget that today, 1 o'clock, we're having our congregational meeting. If you can't figure out how to do it, call me. If not, if you do, that's great. I will see you after you go get something to eat at 1 o'clock. I will see your face on a computer screen, and you will see mine. We'll take care of our business. Until then, please be safe. Have a wonderful rest of your day, wonderful rest of your week. And friends, receive this benediction. As you go about your week, let love be genuine. Return no person evil for evil, but hold fast to all that is good. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, give to all those in need. Show only love and compassion to all people, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit go with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>
worship you. And it's my joy to speak your name. And it's my joy to be in your presence. It's my joy. Yeah, it's my joy. And it's my joy to please you, Lord. And it's my joy to honor you. It's my joy to give you the glory. Yeah, it's my joy. It's my joy. And I'm going to sing hallelujah to my King. I will lay my heart down at your feet. And I pray what you hear and what you see brings joy to me. Brings joy to me. It's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy to worship you. To worship you. It's my joy to speak your name. Speak your name. It's my joy to be in your presence. It's my joy. It's my joy. And I will sing hallelujah to my King. And I will lay my heart down at your feet. And I pray what you hear and what you see. Bring joy to me. Bring joy to me. It's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 